Good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. So on the previous episode, I finally got that Thermo King reefer shell painted up. Actually turned out pretty nice. Can't wait to mount it up on the Smoking the Bandit replica trailer I'm building. And I finally got my stall back. So longtime viewers of the channel are probably breathing a sigh of relief in that I can finally put my Smoking the Bandit replica truck that's been sitting outside for the last little while back in the shop. Well, that was the plan, but today is actually a very exciting day because I have not only one, but two reveals that I'm gonna show you. There's the first. Any ideas what this is? That's actually old Twin Sticks ticket off the floor. That is a Wildfire XLT vehicle lift. And I'm so excited to put it together. So a while back, I was uh, watching Roadkill on Motor Trend. And in the particular episode, uh, Freiberger and Dulcich were, they had this old Pontiac and they had stopped by Vice Grip Garage. And I actually didn't even realize Vice Grip Garage has his own channel or his own show on Motor Trend now. So that's really cool. And so I'm watching the episode and they've got this lift, this wildfire lift, and it's a four post lift with platforms. So they drive the vehicle on and then they raise it up in the air. And then they've got a scissor lift that actually raises it off the platforms to do brakes or change wheels or do alignment or whatever. And I thought, man, that is the coolest, safest lift I think I've ever seen. So I actually reached out to wildfire lifts and they're a father and son organization, Mike and Brad, and they're just the coolest guys. They're out of, uh, they build these out of Minneapolis. And I said, would you be interested in partnering with Twin Stick Garage? And they, they agreed. They are just awesome, awesome guys. So it's a small family owned company. They've been around for about eight years now. And again, the more research I did and the more I talked to them about it, I realized, like I say, that is one of the safest lifts out there on the market. And the cherry on top that makes their lift, that separates them from every other lift, is the fact that it actually has casters. So just like the gantry crane here, you can actually kick the casters down and roll it around your shop. Because that was the biggest thing that I was concerned about, was actually hilting it into the, into the concrete, drilling holes, and then it would be permanently mounted. And because it is a vehicle lift, like it's 16 feet long, it'll lift my pickup truck no problem but it won't lift a semi. So I thought, I don't necessarily wanna have it bolted down and not be able to move it around. And their lift, actually, you can move it around, like I say, just like the gantry. So it is the coolest lift out there. I can't wait to, uh, to put it together. So with that, I think I'm gonna stop jabbering on here, back this into the shop, and we'll use the old Gratz gantry to, to get her done and start putting it together. Oh, look at that, instructions. Huh. That's awesome. There's Brad and Mike on the back of the instruction manual. Wildfirelift.com. So yeah, you can check them out at the website there. They got all kinds of information. Oh, look at these instructions. These are like the field procedures I use when we, uh, where I work. But very, very detailed colored instructions with warnings. No, that's good. That's going to be very helpful as I put this together. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Now the cool thing about this as well, I was doing some research, is a lot of this stuff comes pre-assembled. Like the cables are already run, the pulleys, the hydraulic lines, so there's actually not that much to install. There's a little bit, so these must be the Teflon blocks where the, uh, I wonder where those are. Yeah, I'll have to look for them, but the posts, so there's four posts and the, uh, basically the, the bracket wraps right around the post. It slides right over it and that way it can't walk away from the post. So that's one of the safety features that they have. It's got a double locking system. So yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be pretty slick. Now, if, you're, if you don't feel comfortable uh, building this, they actually do have um, uh, assembly organizations or uh, subcontractors that'll help you install or come to your house and put this together. So you don't necessarily need a lot of big tools. It's, it's pretty much small hand tools, ratchets, screwdrivers, that type of thing. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable building it, they can actually coordinate that and help you bring someone out to, uh, to put that together. And you don't necessarily need a gantry that can support 5,000 pounds. You can actually use a lot of this, a lot of the guys that put these together, they just use the uh, engine hoists with the, you know, the arm to put the engine in your car. You can actually just pick all these things up with a sling and an engine hoist. I'm going to use the gantry, of course, because it's right here and it's easy to use. But uh, they also recommend that you should have a friend. So I called Blake. I like doing everything myself, but I'm going to see if maybe Blake from uh, Flywell Fabricate can stop by when I get to some of the heavy stuff. So I'll keep taking all this apart. I'll spread it all out. And, uh, and yeah, I don't think it's going to be, it's going to be too bad to put together. It's going to be fun. Bye, Mrs. Justice. Okay, so what I wanted to do now was lift up the top runway. Hey, Beth, you come to help? And this one's a little heavier than the bottom one because actually right underneath here is the hydraulic ram. It's integral to this runway. Now the gantry shouldn't have any trouble lifting it, but I'm just going to want to make sure it doesn't swing too hard when I lift this up. Finally got all the plastic off, I got everything laid out. So now it's time to start assembling. So these are the cross beams. And as I was mentioning, they have a lot of stuff already set up. So the cables are all underneath the, the runways. And then the, this is the locking system, but the pulleys are already installed. So these are seal bearing pulleys. They got the linkage set up. And just reading the instructions, it says, make sure you get your orientation the way you like it, where you want the uh, hydraulic pump unit which is over there we'll be installing that later so i kind of thought in this back corner would be the place that i want it and then have the drive on ramps there but again it's got casters so i can wheel it all over the shop whenever i want to so okay blake's still not here so i'm going to try and do this myself but maybe i'll use the help of the gantry so essentially what i need to do is i just need to put the posts through the cross beam and then set it up Sounds easy. Yeah, so a couple learnings there. <laughs> Maybe make your sling a little shorter, Mark, because I was running out of chain there. That's why I brought in the second chain fall, but it was enough to, to tip it into place. So I guess what I need to do now is square it up. I've got to put in these Teflon guides. As you can see, it's kind of crooked in there. So I got to put one on each corner like this and that'll square it up. And then I'll move it closer to the runners here. And then that one will be done. And then I got to do the same thing with those ones. Uh, I should also read the instructions a little closer. 
So it said to make sure that your six notches from the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's got to be right around waist level. And that's logical because when you get the front and back cross beams set up, you don't want to have to lift those things way up into the air. So the lower the better. So it's a good thing I got two chain pulls. Now, the cool thing about this, well there's a lot of cool things about wildfire lifts, but the fact that it has dual locks. So as you can see, I had to prop them both open. So this one, there's gonna be a cable that's gonna go through there. So if the cable ever breaks, the secondary lock slams closed and stops the lift from falling. And then this is your primary one. So this is, this locks as you go up and then you have to hold the lever to open it to release it to go down. So that's why I put the Teflon sticks in there just to hold them open while I lower this to the proper position. Get in here, like so. And then one that's notched, it must be notched on the other side, to go in order to allow the locks to go in. So it's notched to go like that. So the lock can still go in there and the Teflon block will block it. So we'll put him in there. Just try to wiggle it a little. Oh man, was that ever perfect timing. So Blake from Flywell Fabricate, go check out his YouTube channel. That's some awesome work. He's been helping me on the Iron Duke project. And is now here to help me on the uh, lift. So I got the uh, second upright set up and he pulled up. So that was just, like I say, perfect timing because this is probably the, the not the sketchiest, but the, the most difficult part of the assembly. And I think you'd want to have a second person for sure with this. Because as we lift this up, these are awfully heavy, number one. Number two, we'll have to kind of shimmy the legs underneath and you're going to have to line it up and there'll be a little bit of wiggling to get the bolts through. So it's probably good to do this with two people, not just by yourself. More hands, less work. More hands, less work. I love it. Thank you. Work on that, huh? <laughs> the drift pins are a pretty good idea. I like that. Okay. A good quality drift pin will save you so much time on lining stuff like this up. And one advice I give to young guys: yeah, spend money on drift pins like your life depends on it, because it actually just might. So if you oh, you mean if it breaks, like if you have a cheap one? Exactly. These each one of these drift pins cost me close to a hundred dollars. But you're not worried about reefing on it if it's a little off? No, and I have no problem torquing on something and they'll actually bend a little bit. If you put enough force on, I'm talking with a snipe, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, trying to move something over. I've landed 20,000 pound cyclones. Really? And tweaking those into place. With this get, these? With this these. Getting these guys lined up, drop some drift pins in them, yeah. tweak it, and then now you can start running bolts. Impressive. Right? Love it. Leverage is your friend. Or washers. And so are quality tools, right? Quality tools. Oh, and just from looking at this lift, from the little bit I've been exposed to it, yeah. this is a quality built tool. Yeah, these guys aren't messing around. No, and, and little cutting corners. It's just, you can just tell the care that they put into uh, the design, the fabrication, the bending, the welding. It's. You can spot all that right away. I can spot it like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's definitely stout. Yeah, it's gonna be built to last. My grandkids will be uh, probably replacing the batteries in their electric cars 50 years from now. Exactly. There won't be any gas engines or diesel engines left. Well, you just made, we just became better friends. You're a friend with a lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. A guy with a trailer has a lot of friends, but a guy with a lift has even more. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we we're just trying to figure out how the drive ramps go on there, and then we realized that we missed putting these brackets on. So now that the brackets are on there, check this out. Oh, isn't that slick? Go. Drive on, drive off ramps. Both sides too. Yeah, so oh. if a guy gets it spun around in a different part of the shop, you can use it on both ends. Oh man, that is yeah. slick. So the threaded one is gonna go here. Okay. Because this is where the motor's gonna go. Okay. 
And then the other thread you want to go a pity corner. And I assume they kind of go in towards the cable's head? Yep. Okay. I was trying to figure out how they stay in there, but I guess the cable's going to be run through it. It's just and pressure fit. And there's these guys, the shims that are put on there with these big spot welts, that's to take up slack. Oh, they're tapered. Yeah. That's like tapered, but they just, they just fit like that just to take up slack. Oh, I see. And it's just like they have to jump out that far before they go. You know, the weight of themselves is going to keep them in there. Yeah. But, I mean, you don't necessarily need a 16 foot shop to use this. Nope. A guy, a hobbyist, can still put this in a garage and lift this car up enough to get underneath. As long as you got like a 10 foot ceiling, I think that would be adequate. Yeah. So. Do you get a couple uh, rubber chickens? Yeah. And you leave them on the, oh, and they on, the on the roof? Just prop it up a little bit higher, and then when she starts talking, they stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she don't end up in the master bedroom up above you. Exactly. All right, next up is the cables, and they're all pre run underneath, I believe, this side. Yeah, they're there. Okay. Loop around. Do we have bottom? And then there's pressure on here, and that's what is your Oh, that's what he was saying, yeah. So when the, if the cable ever breaks, the secondary lock will just snap closed. Yeah. And what I think we need Oh, to that's got a bolt up to there. That's right. So the next step here is to set up the linkage for the locks. So essentially this is going to be the handle where you can manually open up the locks and this will be the side where I've got the hydraulic pump as well. So underneath here there's a rod that goes the full length of the runway, I'll show you. And well now you get a sense. So there's the hydraulic ram and then there's all the cables that go to each of the posts. So there's a little viewing window here and you thread the handle into this rod that goes the full length and then we'll go down to this end here and then uh, where is it there it is there and then that connects in to this end so you screw this in and then it'll connect to this linkage that goes to each of the locks so what will happen is when I actually like I say finish this up you turn that handle down and it'll open all four locks at the same time because again that rod's connected and it's going to pull this linkage in allowing you to lower the lift down to the ground all right so i'll get into the final steps of the assembly here i am actually pleasantly surprised this thing is quite easy to put together not even old twin sticks can figure it out the instructions are very well laid out i was following along and they had a few bunch of little tips and tricks on how to tighten things up put some cover caps on and yeah, it's going really well. So the next step up is to put the hydraulic power unit on there. So this of course drives a hydraulic ram which raise, or pulls the cables in or releases them and raises and lowers the lift. Now, this comes without oil in it. So you just gotta run down to your local hardware um, supplier and get some hydraulic oil. I think it takes about three gallons of oil. And then I'm gonna mount it up on this mounting plate that I put in place. And it's pretty stout. So they're recommending to actually fill it full of oil uh, on the ground and then lift it into place. So maybe to save my back, I might bring the gantry over here. But they don't ship it with oil, I think, just because it gets kind of a little dicey when you start shipping chemicals around. But they do ship anywhere in North America. They'll ship you this lift. So I believe they've got a warehouse in Portland. They've got one in, obviously, their headquarters in Minneapolis. And then I'm pretty sure they have one in the south, I believe, in North Carolina. So they'll ship anywhere in the States and they're now shipping into Canada as well. So again, check out their website, wildfirelifts.com and, uh, and check them out, give them a call and see what it might cost to get you one of these and get it shipped to your location. So what I'm gonna do now is fill that full of oil and put it in place and then hook up the hydraulic line and then it needs 20 amp service. If you don't have 20 amp service at least, it might, uh, it might cough a little. So make sure you have at least a 20 amp breaker. And with any luck, we might actually get to, to raise and lower this lift. Exciting.
All right, ready to do a lift now. So I need to take the slack out of all the cables. So basically the ram's gonna move. And you can see the cable starting to tighten up. I should probably check to make sure they're all on the pulleys. Like you can see it's taking all the, because uh, Blake and I, when we pulled the cables, we pulled the ram off, so now there's a whole bunch of air in the ram. So now it's filling the oil. <laughs> there you go! Oh man, that is cool. And that's how it goes into the lock. Okay, so now to lower it, you simply open the locks up, the primary locks, and then you release the pressure. And it just walks down thanks to gravity. <laughs> that is so cool. So then you select the spot you want to lock it into. And it'll open and then close. And that's it. It's safely locked in that position. No more laying on the floor on a creeper for old twin sticks, thanks to wildfire lifts. Okay, so now there's still a few more goodies to put on here. Uh, there's stops that go here, so you don't drive the car or the truck right off the ramp. And then we've already built the, the hooks for the ramps. Oh yeah, there's a, uh, a rolling bridge that I need to put in here. And then of course, I also need to install the casters at the bottom. And then I need to put on the, the bridge crane as well. So yeah, there's still a few more things to do. We're definitely in the home stretch. Awesome. Okay, now that is the money. So for some reason I was thinking that mounted on this, but this is just a, a tool tray, or I guess it could be a catch basing. It's got a little drain plug in there. But that, uh, that just rolls fore and aft on its own. This thing has its own uh, runners or wheels to roll on, so it goes fore and aft. And then, of course, when you drive the vehicle on, I was wondering how the heck do you actually lift it off of the, the main runners there to change the wheels or do brakes or do alignments. And that's how, with the scissor lift that goes, that just rides along on the rails. So I was reading about the capacity. It says it can lift 3,000 pounds and you just basically roll it underneath the vehicle. And then these, these arms just come out to wherever your lift points are. And then it's air actuated and it just lifts the vehicle up off of the runners. Man, is that ever cool. Okay, who wants to see this thing operate? I know I do. Oh, I see. It's got locks there. Oh, isn't that awesome? Yeah, you gotta hold this manually up in order to have it lower all the way down. Again, wildfire is just completely on safety. Oh yeah, check this out. I've got some, some risers as well, both short and tall, in order to get it up away from this platform your lift points, so that's pretty sick. And even got a little mounting bracket that holds all of those. Man! Man! <laughs> all right, the final piece of the puzzle. These are the casters. The caster arms. Let me see here. It's just gonna mount to allow this thing to roll around the shop. Yeah, that, that must be how it goes. Yeah. So, 
So I think that's it for the install. Now the way these work is, I believe when you actually, as the lift lowers, the cross beam set into these channels here, and then it just shoves down on the wheels because it's so heavy, right? Then it goes, it lifts the post up, and then it rolls around on the wheel. So let's give it a go. Uh, oh yeah, I gotta go up. Release the locks, and then I gotta hold that and let it all the way down. Oh, that is cool. All right, fully down. I'll see if I can move this thing. Oh, yes, look at this! You can move your lift around. I mean, it's stuck, like pushing the gantry, but it's probably about the same weight. That's not bad at all. Okay, I don't know what's cooler. The air jack in the middle, or the ability to roll it around the shop. Man, it's a toss-up. What a cool lift system. All right, so what a beautiful piece of equipment. And longtime viewers of the channel are probably wondering, well, yeah, Mark, it's, it's lovely, uh, but why do you have a automobile lift? I mean, it's a big lift, but it's obviously not designed for to lift semi-trucks up. So what are you doing with this lift here? Well, in order to answer that question, I'd like to introduce the newest addition to the Twin Stick Garage list of projects. Come on in, Mrs. Twin Sticks. You can't have a Smokey and the Bandit truck without a Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am. Yeah. Hey, Mrs. Twin Sticks. That's a nice Mother's Day present. Let's hear it, gun it a few times. <laughs> yeah, so with that, like I say, that's what we're gonna be uh, working on here at Twin Stick Garage. We picked up a, now this is a 1980 Trans Am with a 77 front clip on it. And this will be Bandit 1 and that is a Bandit 2 together again. Oh yeah, like uh, Fred and Ginger and Lester and Earl. All right, in order to show the viewers how easy it is to use this lift, my wonderful, beautiful, special, lovely wife is going to demonstrate. Give her a go. Ah, sweet. So you see as it goes up, these locks click in, but then if you want to lower it down, you got to hold the handle to hold the locks open to allow it to go down. And then this here is a lift to actually roll it underneath the vehicle and then you can actually lift it up off of these runners so you can take the wheels off. It's pretty sweet. So you'll notice it's got Corvette 15 by eight rally wheels on it. Those are obviously not movie correct. So that's why I had those snowflake rims sitting over there that you've seen in an earlier episode. So it needs a bit of work. I bought it off a wonderful guy that kind of started working on it. Obviously it's in primer. Uh, it's black on red. Of course, movie car was black on black. So that's going to be the plan is to change the interior over to black. Still needs some sanding, still needs paint. It needs a, uh, uh, definitely, a lot of people are going to ask, well, what's, what's in it for an engine? It's got the anemic 301, but we are definitely going to, uh, to change that. And Blake at Flywell Fabricate said that he's going to rig up some fancy exhaust. For this thing some stainless steel exhaust we'll get the pipes from lyle's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty sweet so yeah that's almost i know maybe a little more wait till the locks click one more time and then you can release the button as soon as they go click good perfect now what we can do is push this button or push this lever and this will relieve the pressure and to make sure that it's sitting on the locks there now it's safely locked in. 
and you can undo this. That's pretty slick. Yeah, now we can go underneath. So let's take a look. <laughs> well, it's sweating a little. Yeah, a lot of this stuff's gonna be gonna be replaced. That ah, doesn't look too too bad. I mean, this car is is pretty vintage. Again, it's a 1980. Boy, I think it'd be louder with those tiny little mufflers on there, huh? And I'm gonna have to figure out a way to pinch the back brakes because the guy I bought it off of, he, these are rear discs and he redid them before I got it, before I picked it up. So it doesn't do brake stands at all. So what we're gonna have to do is pinch the back brake lines and do a hillbilly line lock to do a burnout, but yeah. What do you think? It doesn't look too rusty. I mean, we'll definitely have to do some work down here. But yeah, cool? Cool. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to call that a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Special thanks to Wildfire Lifts. You guys make a hell of a product. Go check them out, wildfirelifts.com. If you're in the market for one of these, if you work on hot rods, or even if you just want to raise your car up every now and then to, to change the oil and get off of the ground rolling around on cardboard or creepers, this is what you need. They, uh, it's a beautiful piece of equipment, and I, I can't say enough good things about it. Really appreciate you guys partnering with Old Twin Sticks to help him get into the world of hot rods, not just trucks. So yeah, that's what uh, we're going to kind of not necessarily transitioning. I still got lots of work to do on these other two trucks, but uh, I really wanted to start working on a Trans Am. I just thought it would be cool to have Mrs. Twin Sticks drive in front of me. She could run blocker as I'm hauling the truck and trailer behind her. I think it'll be a, a heck of a sight. So lots of work that needs doing. I, uh, I, there's no shortage of, of projects here at Twin Stick Garage. So I really encourage you to to follow along, subscribe if you haven't already. There's going to be plenty of work on this channel now. I've got backlog for years. And uh, really appreciate if you can hit the like button down below. That helps drive the analytics and get it out to more people out there in the world of YouTube. And yeah, um, really appreciate you watching all this to the end. Thank you for, uh, for your comments, your thoughts, and thank you most of all for your time. I mean, everyone's time is valuable, and I uh, really appreciate you spending a little bit with me following along on this channel. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up there. See you next week. And don't ever forget, if you got it, a trucker brought it.